you'll find that these kids have boundless, boundless imaginations and they don't struggle with self-worth. They don't struggle with questioning if they're enough or not. Every single baby that comes into the world, they don't even question like, hmm, am I worthy of having milk? Like, am I worthy of being fed today? Am I worthy of having my diaper changed? No, they're like, you woman, change my diaper, feed me, right? Like they, they scream if you don't, they demand it. That's how much worth they know is available to them. The brilliance of the human experience, you know, being a spiritual being coming into human form is that we all have this veil put on. Now, we can talk about this scientifically, which you've heard me mention many, 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 many times, where um, from the ages of zero to seven years old, we're literally walking, absorbing subconscious minds. So we don't really have that critical factor that allows us to tap into our critical thinking, our analytical mind, question things, right? This is why it's so easy for kids to believe in Santa Claus. Versus if you at the age of 30 were told, you know, by the way, there's a big fat man that comes through your chimney and delivers gifts to you every single uh, year on Christmas, you'll be like, what the fuck? No, like how? You know what I mean? Like you would you would have a lot of questions about this. <laughs> you would question this concept, but kids don't. Right. And that's how all of our beliefs are passed down from our parents, from other adults in our lives is because we don't have this ability to question. We literally don't have the barrier between our conscious minds and our subconscious minds. We really don't have our conscious minds online yet. And from the spiritual perspective, it's looked at as a veil because kids, if you'll notice, depending on how you know sensitive your child is, you may notice your child. I notice this within my kid all the time. They seem to all have imaginary friends, right? Or they seem to be looking at things or describing things to you or just saying random shit. Like I love this series on social media where moms will post their children's talking about past lives. Like, oh, hey, mommy, I was your mommy last time. And I remember being your mommy. And, you know, the parents are always like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, is my kid crazy? No, your kid literally doesn't have the veil yet between the human world and the spiritual world. And so they're able to take in all of this input from the spiritual world. But then somewhere between the ages of three and seven, and the reason why I say three is because free will actually comes in around three years old, the veil comes down and we forget who we truly are. You'll never find a child, you know, with the exception of extreme abuse. I understand there's, you know, exceptions here, but let's say a healthy child raised in a healthy family, you'll find that these kids have boundless, boundless imaginations and they don't struggle with self-worth. They don't struggle with questioning if they're enough or not. Every single baby that comes into the world, they don't even question like, hmm, am I worthy of having milk? Like, am I worthy of being fed today? Am I worthy of having my diaper changed? No, they're like, you woman, change my diaper, feed me, right? Like they, they scream if you don't. They demand it. That's how much worth they know is available to them. But around that age, we have to forget because it's part of our agreement is that we would sign this contract, plan out, you know, a certain amount of lessons and things and themes to occur in our lifetimes, you know, with free will, of course, because we can also then create whatever it is that we want in between those themes and things like that. Then we also sign the contract to forget all of this, right? About ourselves, about who we are, about our soul families, about our spiritual nature, about the fact that we are enough, we're worthy, we are loved, we are perfect just the way that we are. And we literally like have this experience where we're like, hmm, what lessons can I conjure up for myself in the light in the next lifetime that will really make me forget that I'm enough? Let me have an abusive father. Let me get abandoned by my mother. Let me get put up for adoption, right? Like all these things, we literally sign contracts, soul contracts, and make agreements because then we really, wow, like I would learn really quickly. Like I would learn a lot. I would come out of this lifetime 
really remembering who I am because I forgot to such an extreme degree. Okay. I feel like I'm getting a little too tangenty here now or a little too deep into this. So I want to start kind of pulling it back and wrapping up. So if we never forgot this, if we've never had an agreement with this to do this, then we don't have to remember. And then there's no point to the human experience because why the fuck do we come into the human experience? Then we can just be souls and just remember how perfect we are and just lollygag in the spiritual plane. But we sign up for earth school because it is such an incredible path to our soul evolution. 